The Netherlands Pavilion at Expo 2020 Dubai proposes a circular climate system that harvests water, energy, manufactures rain, and produces food, creating a temporary biotope that embodies the fusion between art, architecture, and technology. What more can you possibly desire from an Expo Pavilion? I have the honor of speaking with Niels Bauman, the Pavilion Director, and Michael Rabhos, the V8 Aritex owner, right here, right now, at Expo Talks. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for welcoming me at one of the most sustainable pavilions at Expo. I mean, Netherlands isn't just a building, it's a biotope where you unite water, energy, and food, if I'm not mistaken, right? True, true. That's what you see behind us, right? the, big, exactly. the big cone with oh, uh, almost 10,000 edible plants. Wow. Um, could you please just run us through the theme of the pavilion and the standout sustainability aspects from both of your perspectives? Yeah. What we, what we did already from the Dutch government several years ago, we, we were thinking, okay, what is the issue, what is the challenge here in the region? It's about water, food and energy. So we decided already, I think four or five years ago, stick to this theme and help the region in order to get less food security, things like that. And so the way to the expo for us is even more important than the, than the expo. So we have the way to the expo, we have the expo, but also the way after the expo, all about this thing. Very thoughtful. What about you, Michael? Uh, I totally agree. I, that's also the brief we got three and a half years ago when we won the competition, unite water, energy and food. Uh, but as designers, as architects, we found a dilemma there because how do you uh, talk about water, energy and food in the desert? Exactly. How, how do you get to water, energy and food? Uh, so we came up with this idea to make a harvesting machine so if we're able to introduce a lot of innovations mm -hmm. and harvest energy, water and food and bring them together in a biotope, and that's what we, what we see here, then we make this very inclusive circular system in the desert. And this whole theme of circularity we brought to another level because we even included the way we built this pavilion in a circular way. Uh, also to the, uh, to the, you could say, the expression to the main theme of the pavilion. Exactly, this enhances and reflects the whole theme of Expo by leaving this sustainable legacy for, for future generations as well as emphasizing human development and uh, innovative technology, as you said. So a question for you, Michael, would be, uh, why did the pavilion make use of only locally available building and uh, construction materials? It's, um, well, as I said before, it's a very holistic approach. and. If you're uh, to make a pavilion which stands for six months, so a temporary pavilion, and we felt the obligation to leave a zero footprint, to so leave the plot behind for future developments, and you're part of the sustainability district, you don't want to ship in all materials from Europe. If I would make a building in Europe, I would use wood because that's locally available, but there are no forests here. So we started to research what material is available here in Dubai to use as a local material. And we found these sheet piles, all this corroded steel you see behind, are used here in Dubai to create building pits for skyscrapers. They're used okay. to make harbor basins. Wow. And we come from the Netherlands, where we are, let's say, 25% is below sea level. So we're used to civil engineering. So actually what we do here is we create an ode to civil engineering and these materials we rent it locally and we will turn them to the building industry after six months. Thank you for that. Very interesting insights. Now, Niels, moving on to you. Netherlands marked an early start of construction. As I heard, how did this help ramp up the overall journey of the pavilion at this global event? We, we, yeah, indeed. We started early, but it was quite a challenge for us, but also together with V8 Architects and our construction company to see how do we want to do it. Because you need time. It's good to put everything and all the designs on paper, but then you have to construct it. Find the uh, local resources, find the right staff, but also how do we do it together with the local authorities? So that was, a, I think it's, it's not we, you, it's a co-creation between, I think, the Expo organization, the local authorities, the government, the V8 Architects, uh, Expo Mobile, our construction company, and the rest of the consortium as well. So right. that took time. It's not that you switch on the light on and off and here you are. And Definitely. you see it as well, it's not a, a, a copy-paste standard 
uh, pavilion. Definitely is, and a great organization brings excellent results at the end of the day, and I'm sure you're very proud of all the effort and all the energy that you place into this pavilion and, and constructing it in general. So, Michael, how did you collaborate with the main contractor, the experienced architect, um, the Dutch engineering and, and consultancy firms to, let's say, bring this pavilion to life? Well, as Neil said before, it started three and a half years ago and it will last for more years after the expo. So you could say the pavilion is a platform. It's a platform for innovation, a platform for co-creation. And when we got to know this competition three and a half years ago as architects, and we also needed to engineer it, we need to build it, we need to make this uh, immersive show. So we teamed up with a lot of specialist consultants from, uh, from the Netherlands, but also abroad, uh, to make up this consortium. And what happened along the way is that a lot of innovators, artists, joined us in that mission. There are innovations here in the pavilion which didn't exist two years ago. Uh, for example, the, the skylights, the colored skylights, which are able to harvest energy out of the sun, but also to let through the light which is required for the photosynthesis to grow the plants. It's an organic foil, which didn't exist three years ago. Wow. So I, I, I think in that sense, an expo, a pavilion, is all about experimenting and embracing the most new techniques. And although they're prototypes, and they might not be 100% efficient now, it's a, a challenge to the industry to take on these ideas and to, uh, to scale them up. Effective, definitely. And what I'm hearing is some fabulous teamwork from the Dutch. Um, now, looking from a broader perspective, Niels, uh, how does the pavilion act as a catalyst to solve global environmental challenges? I think it's, it, this is a good showcase for the rest of the world as well. We don't tell people, we, we, we don't show people, they have the full experience here. So it's not, call it an empty box. They say, yeah, it's nice to put it on paper, it's a, it, it's a good design, it's a good thing. No, they experience it. So, so that's, that's what we try to do as well. Not only tell it people, but showcase it to the rest of the world, uh, what to do and how to handle. And the Netherlands, I mean, always worked hard to tackle challenges of nature as a large part of your country is below sea level. So I think you guys are experts in doing that, no? Um, Michael, another question for you. What are the challenges that you faced in, in maybe conceptualizing and, and designing and building this vertical bite within the pavilion? I think the, the most challenging part was um, to work together to find ways, let's say, to, to match uh, existing building code regulations with the experimental character of the pavilion. The, the way we, we, we make the structure with the, the sheet piles here is not a standard solution. Basically, it doesn't fit in the software mm. eh, to, be, to be analyzed and to be judged. So, uh, again, referring to the great cooperation with local authorities, I think also for them, it was like a learning curve. So how can you use experimental ways of uh, construction, of architecture, to, uh, to, to lift up and to Im improve your building code regulations. I see, and it's great to hear how you've actually had challenges and the way that you overcame them in the end. I think it brings importance, uh, mm. it brings importance to the structure, definitely. So uh, now I would like to touch upon post-expo a little bit, Niels. Uh, how do you plan to dismantle this pavilion uh, post-expo and ensure that there is minimum wastage um, left? We, we started already together with, with uh, Fiat Architects in, at the beginning with, with put all the, all the used materials, what we use here, put it on, on in a sort of passport. And based on the passport, we, we can follow the whole yeah, uh, flow of where the products came from. Mm -hmm. We use it here and where did they go to after the expo. That's important because otherwise it's an, call it an empty box. It's nice to showcase it, but now you follow it. So you p we put, for example, some stamps on the sheet piles so we can follow them. Where do they go to for the next project? So with all the products we use and all the, all the materials we use, we, you can follow them like a sort of track and trace, call it like this, uh, where they go, where they came from, we use them now and where they go to. And that's important to call it close a circle as well. So that's sustainability. It's, that's very significant. Thank you yeah. for that for that message. And um, as we have to wrap up our interview, I would like to ask you your final thoughts on the World Expo and your final messages that you would like to bring out to everybody coming in and visiting your pavilion um, in the next couple of months. I think it's it's one come over and and enjoy and experience not only our pavilion, but we have, I think, 200 nice, really nice and attractive pavilions for all around the world. 
enjoy it. Great. What about you, Michael? I think uh, what learned me is that meeting physically is so important. I think that's what all an expo is about. Of course, through COVID, we stayed at home. We were teaming, we were Zooming, etc., etc. But to inspire people truly, and I think you have to inspire people to be able to make changes and to, to, to make a shift, you need to meet. And I think that's, and that's I think what Dubai is showing here with the expo, it's a very relevant uh, stage for that. Definitely, everybody's connecting and bringing all cultures into one uh, spot. And I must say what I really enjoy here in the Dutch Pavilion, I've showed some uh, people around uh, the last days. If you see people enjoying the show with the umbrellas, they leave the pavilion very happy. They're smiling, they're okay. cheering, they're applauding. You see their insights. That's really cool. Yeah, they yeah. Come we really are able to um, uh, to touch upon emotions and to uh, to touch all senses. That's always great. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for welcoming me at this nature-loving pavilion. I've had a lot of fun here filming, and hope to see you again soon. Best Thank of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. With the theme of uniting water, energy, and food, the Netherlands Pavilion will be connecting minds for a sustainable future. If you enjoyed the Netherlands journey at Expo 2020, make sure to like and comment your thoughts below, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel for more Expo content. Sustainability is all about treating ourselves and our environment as if we're going to live on this earth forever. And this is why we're connecting minds and creating the future. I'm gonna go enjoy the show.